Okay, so last class we introduced the concept of in situ stresses, and now we have three stresses, three principal stresses. And uh, for this particular case, uh, what we want to know is the magnitude of those stresses and what they mean, and how to write this as a stress tensor, because that's something that we're going to have to use later on in order to uh, do uh, operations uh, with stress, with strain, with stiffness. Uh, we need to write this uh, full stress tensor. And the first thing that we did uh, that is going to help us to solve some of these problems of uh, geomechanics is to write the equilibrium equations, which we said that uh, are valid for any type of problem. It doesn't matter if you have an anisotropic medium, a viscoelastic medium, whatever you have, the equilibrium equations are these and have to be always fulfilled. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to talk, uh, step back a little bit, talk about principal stresses, and then we'll use this equation to tell what is the vertical stress as a function of depth. Um, all right, so let's go over there. And, uh, let's try again the stress tension. This is going to be very useful too when we plot the stress tensor and when we try to understand what is inside uh, these numbers. Okay, a very convenient way of, um, um, of trying to interpret uh, this stress tensor is uh, to, as we said before, uh, is to convert this stress tensor or write it in terms of uh, principal stresses. So uh, for any uh, stress tensor, uh, remember that we're going to be always capable of writing the stress tensor as principal stresses where I'm going to call the sigma, the principal stresses sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3, uh, where if I write this stress tensor in the coordinate system of the principal directions, I'm going to write this stress tensor always with sigma 1 larger than sigma 2 and larger than sigma 3. Remember that uh, we are assuming that compression is positive. So this is the most compressive stress, and this is the least compressive stress, which is some, sometimes could be also a tension. In geomechanics, almost always, at least there is uh, one component of compression. In this configuration also, always these principal stresses are going to be perpendicular to each other. The direction of those is going to be perpendicular. And it, this is similar remember, to the cube. In a cube, always the faces uh, are going to be uh, perpendicular uh, to each other. And that's going to be something uh, very useful. Because, for example, uh, let's assume a particular case, what we wrote before is a general case, but in a particular case, let's say that the uh, largest stress is the vertical stress. So if the maximum principal stress is a vertical stress, that implies automatically that the other two principal stresses are going to be horizontal. And we're going to call those the maximum horizontal stress, sigma h max, and the minimum horizontal stress, sigma h min. I have a question. Yes. Um, is there 
a difference between writing sigma h max and sh max? And like, yes. when and why would you use one or the other? So, for the remainder of this course, we are going to use a convention. I don't know if I wrote it before, let me check. Uh, okay, no, so far I didn't write any any S's. We did so, on the homework. Oh, in the homework we did. Okay, good catch. Uh, in the remainder of the course, we'll use a convention in which S is a total stress and sigma is an effective stress. So that's going to be our convention. And now I'm, I'm uh, just talking about effective stresses. OK. So uh, if I were to write now the stress tensor uh, in a, for a particular phrase in which, again, and now I'm going to use this notation the maximum stress is uh, sigma v and the intermediate is sigma h max and the least principal stress is sigma h min then the stress tensor as a matrix 3 by 3 in the coordinate system of the principal stress is going to be written like this uh, so let me clarify this this is the coordinate system of principal stresses. I put a lot of emphasis on coordinate systems because we're going to deal with those a lot as we move into three-dimensional problems and real application problems in which the stress has a direction, say for example, east-west and a given fault has a direction, for example, uh, strike 30 degrees and uh, deep 10 degrees. Uh, we need to relate, put all of those things together, and, and the coordinate system is going to be very useful. Okay? Uh, all right. So, these are all effective stresses. If I want to write, uh, the total stress, um, I'm going to have to add four pressure. As a quick reminder, uh, the sigma, uh, the effective stress sigma, is going to be, we're going to assume this uh, equation now, we'll, we'll see later on, uh, change a little bit, it's going to be the total stress tensor minus or pressure times the identity matrix. Um, and I'm going to write this out now in a minute, but what I want to do now is to write the total stress tensor. The total stress tensor, therefore, is going to be this one plus that one. And in this case, it's going to be um, SV. SH max and SH min and this is going to be equal to uh, sigma V plus for pressure this is zero, this is zero sigma H max plus core pressure and again this uh, is a matrix 3 by 3 and uh, finally sigma h min plus the core pressure this identity matrix it's a matrix of ones um, 0, 0, 0, 1 so the core pressure is just in the diagonal and that makes a lot of sense because pore pressure cannot apply the shear stress. Uh, the pore pressure uh, is uh, applied by a fluid, 
and fluids uh, cannot apply shear stress because they cannot resist a steady force of shear. So they just appear in the diagonal terms and they affect the normal stresses. If you vary, for example, the pore pressure in a rock, that's going to cause volumetric changes. If you decrease the pore pressure, the rock gets smaller. If you increase the pore pressure, the rock expands. And we're going to get in detail later on uh, about that phenomenon when we get to pore elasticity. But I don't want to do that right now. What I want to do is now that we have the stress tensor for a particular place, uh, what we want to do is to be able to make something like this, in which we know for pressure, uh, we can calculate vertical stresses, and we can also calculate horizontal stresses. It's going to be a relatively long way to get to calculate the horizontal stress. Those are more difficult. But the vertical stress is relatively easy, and that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, all right, so this is our objective. First of all, we have three unknowns. We want to calculate one of those, all right? Uh, so in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use the equation that we just wrote uh, on, uh, on Wednesday, which is this equilibrium equation. Uh, let me cancel the other focus. Okay, nice one. Um, just to not do more. Okay, so uh, you remember the indices one, two, three. Uh, all right, so we're going to use those indices, and uh, let me let me think about the. Uh, Right contact coordinate system is going to be like this. This is going to be one, this is going to be two, and this is going to be three. Which of these is going to be the vertical stress? Which sigma? Uh, if I assume that in this is a vertical axis. Sigma 3, 3, right? So let's just concentrate in this equation. All right. So uh, in order to solve this, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we have a half space. Uh, and that means it's a, a medium which is infinitely long in direction 1, infinitely long in direction 2, infinitely long in direction 3, but just in one direction. Because this is going to be a surface. And it's going to be a free surface. OK? Can you explain it? Okay. Yes, what yes, I, I can do that. What, what, what are you drawing? Is this are infinitely long? In this this oh. drawing, yeah. uh, it, it just meaning that uh, we have a free surface, yeah. which is going to be, let's say, the surface of the Earth. Uh -huh. and, and I'm just drawing this as a circle. Uh -huh. But uh, it, it's really meaning that it's infinitely long Your in horizontal direction. The, the, the radius is infinitely long. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, here, uh -huh. I'm going to have some density, OK? Um, and this is going to be infinitely long in direction 1, inf infinitely long in direction 2. And also, this is going to be a free surface. And in that free surface, there is no shear. So the sigma 3, 1 is equal to the sigma 3, 2. And it's equal to 0, no shear. Let's write that. And also, I'm going to assume that in that free surface, the stress, uh, normal stress, is also equal to zero. 
So the fact that this is an infinitely long medium and that it looks the same in, as we move in this direction one and this direction two uh, allows me to write that the variations in direction one are going to be equal to the variations in direction two and those are going to be equal to zero. So whatever I put here or there that's going to be, oh, those variations are going to be equal to zero. So in this equation, this is going to be equal to zero, and this is going to be equal to zero. And the only thing I'm going to be left with is this term. And I'm going to change now that uh, to uh, total stress, and uh, uh, that it's going to take into account the weight of the rock and also the weight of the fluid. And this equation is going to be simply saying that the variation of vertical stress, because it's in direction 3, 3, as a function of, in this case, the coordinate x3, is equal to the uh, force per unit of volume, uh, which in this case is going to be the density times gravity. So if I want to know what is SV as a function of X3, the only thing I have to do is I have to integrate. And I'm going to move this SV. Uh, I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to put an integral. This is going to be the integral from 0 to SV at X3. And here, I move this X3 over there. And this is going to be density. And I'm going to add one more thing over here. I'm going to make this a variable, because it could be a variable. With differential of X3. And this goes from 0 to X3. And since I said that the vertical stress on the surface is going to be equal to zero, when I integrate all of this, I'm just going to get 